Hello, thanks for clicking on my video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do this lovely watercolour forest and this uses two colours, simply Luna Blue from Daniel Smith Watercolours and Greenish Umber which is one of my all time favourite colours. I recommend using washi tape or masking tape just to keep the edges clean and make it nice and easy for yourself. And I like this gold washi tape in this dispenser. I feel like the gold is really easy to see where my painting ends. Um, I really did enjoy painting this piece and it is a really nice and simple practice for beginners. This particular piece can be done within about an hour. The first step is to lay down a nice layer of clean water. This is going to be the base for the next step, which will be painting the grey sky or mist. I used a rather small brush for this, but I do recommend perhaps using a thicker brush. I really do like this brush from, I believe it is from Raphael. This particular paint is very granulating, but you could use any grey paint that you'd like. This particular paint is more blue than grey, so I quite like that it added some depth. It kind of separates into two grey and blue particles, which is really nice for a mist. The paper I'm using today is in a sketchbook and it is rough textured, so you'll see a lot of the granulation coming through on that rough paper, but if you have a thinner paper that is not quite so rough, you'll have a smoother finish. I added some salt just to create some texture, I use coarse sea salt. Now we're going to go over the techniques to paint the trees. Very simple, really fun. You want to start with a downward stroke, like this, and then blend up, adding really really small details, just little flicks of your brush. Then moving down again and slowly adding details. The little flicks are what makes each tree unique. It is a really fun way to do it. Now this is the mistier tree, so you're going to blend it out. Lots and lots of water is used for these trees, kind of keeping it nice and transparent. You're going to paint a lot of these particular trees um, with this misty effect. Each layer is going to be painted with slightly more paint than, and less water, M less diluted paint basically and it's a really really fun way to get used to using the different paints and getting as many hues as possible out of one tube of paint, or two in this case, but you can really create wonderful pieces with just one colour. So these are the misty trees but there's also going to be slightly more detailed trees that are closer to the front and this is using a thicker paint mixture, so less water, lots and lots of that green umber colour. And these particular trees are slightly more detailed, you don't blend out the bottom as much, they kind of disappear into the bottom of the piece. I find I take a lot more time on the detailed pieces and trees than I do with the blended out misty trees. Fantastic. Now, let's get this salt off. It's a bit tricky, really, with my brush. And let's get started. Now, the fun part is watering down and adding the very, very mistiest trees. This green umber is already a very transparent green colour, so you really don't need to add much water, and it dries really transparently. You want to blend it out each time you create a layer, you want to blend that colour down nicely down the page. This creates the smooth mist effect, but also creates a bit of a layering effect and each layer will get thicker. If you blend the colours down instead of just blending the trees out, each layer becomes a lot easier to get a, depth, a, a deeper depth of colour really.
So now lots and lots of trees are going to start appearing on this page. Really watering down this first layer, you really want them to be kind of ghostly and almost disappearing into the grey. Do you remember that watercolour does dry down a little bit lighter than it does go down on the page initially? So have it ever so slightly darker than you think, but don't add too much paint at this point. Lots and lots of trees and lots of water. Varying up the different angles of the trees and the heights is quite important because no trees are the same, but like snowflakes. Lots and lots of misty trees and because we didn't get a smooth mist in that um, Luna Blue, we don't need to worry too much about adding trees all the way to the top because it almost looks like there's already trees when you kind of give a hint of the trees. So now we're going to be decreasing the amount of water for the next layer, adding a lot more paint. You could do this with any particular greens or blues. I quite like this greenish umber, which is more close to Payne's grey than it is anything else. It's a really gorgeous colour. But if you prefer, you can use a green. Now you're going to blend that layer down, as you can see, which will help add more depth to the next layer. Watercolour is all about painting from light to dark, so you really want to start as light as possible. You can see the trees that I did on the initial layer have almost faded away into the background, which is exactly what I was hoping would happen. They've really blended out into the mist. Now, this particular piece I painted, I don't know how many trees, so many trees, and it is really relaxing. Just put an audiobook on and start painting. This is a really fantastic way to practice getting as much depth as possible from your watercolours and practice water control without it mattering too much because if you have a piece, a particular tree that ends up with a little bit more uh, water or a little bit more paint than you're meant to, it'll blend out, it's all misty and not every tree will have the same amount of colour to it. So as we get further in, you'll see I've kind of started adding a few more trees with a little bit more paint than others, but still maintaining that ghostly, misty effect at the bottom and blending it out, which really helps diffuse the paint across the page and layers. Now the trees at the bottom, where there's going to be a little bit less mist in this particular piece, are going to be a little bit more dark than the trees at the top, Kind of lead the eye down the page. Now we start to add the fun stuff. More detailed trees at the bottom. For this particular trees, the trees at the bottom, I actually mixed the two colours together. So the lunar blue that was left in my palette got mixed in with the green amber and it just made it ever so slightly dark. You'll see me mix it here. This just meant that that final layer at the front was as dark as I could possibly get these two rather transparent colours to go. And because we built up those layers behind it, it was quite easy to get it very dark. One fantastic thing about this colour combination is it makes a very nice almost black colour that you can use in other paintings if you do like this colour and you have any leftover paint. It is a little bit more depth to it than black, just plain black would do. Now, onto the final tree, and we'll be done. This final tree, I really wanted it to almost be a focal point with the other trees leading down towards this absolutely tall tree, taller than any of the others. This was actually my favorite tree. I always love saving one special tree towards the end of a painting like this one. The hairdryer has helped loosen the glue from the page. I can easily remove the tape and do the best part of a painting, which is the tape peel. 
I really hope that you've enjoyed this little tutorial and do let me know if you give it a go. I'd really love to see people joining in. Thanks so much for watching. Have a lovely day.